tonight. Amen. So glad those that are watching Facebook and live stream tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to see everybody out uh, on a Wednesday evening. Amen. Uh, just a few quick announcements. Uh, well, first, we're going to stand for the reading of God's Word. Amen. How many is glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. How many understand what David said? He said, I'm glad when they said we could go to the house of the Lord. Amen. Brother Jerry's going to come and read the scriptures tonight. Good evening. Whoa, I'm a little close there, isn't it? Hey, how are you? It's good to see you on the front row up here. Turn around and wave at everybody. See if everybody waves back at you. Ain't it good to see the, the young up here in the front? Yeah, it is. We're going to go to uh, Psalms 105, if I can get there. Y'all have to forgive me. I was actually trying to find something here. This is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. It... Uh, really gets me all tingly inside whenever I read it. And, uh, and that tingle feeling is the Holy Ghost just moving all over me. It's David's recall of God's miracles for Israel. And, and, and it just, just is great movement in the words as you read them. It says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon His name. Make known His deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing songs unto him. Thank ye of all his wondrous works. Are we thankful for all of his works? I don't hear you. I said, are we thankful for all of his works? I still don't hear you. I said, are we thankful for all of his works? Yes, we are. All of this pandemic and everything, that has nothing nothing I say in mind for all of his works that are to come can we give God the praise that he deserves today think about the things that are coming in the gates of heaven as we cross over oh my goodness glory in ye the holy name let the heart of them rejoice and seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in the strength. Seek His face evermore. Remember His marvelous works that He has done. His wondrous and His judgments of the mouth. Oh, ye sin of Abraham. His servant, ye children of Jacob have chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments in all of the earth. Are you glad to be children of the Lord? I said, are you glad to be the children of the Lord? Give Him the praise. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated just for a few moments. We'll get a few announcements out of the way and, uh, so you know what's happening. And if you do miss what we got, you can go on our Facebook page. You can go on the website. Uh, we usually pass out a bulletin on Sunday. But not this coming Sunday, but the 20th. How many know what the 20th Sunday morning service entails? Some of you don't know. It's pastor appreciation. Amen. So don't forget that. Don't forget we usually take up a love offering for our pastor and his family. And be praying what the Lord lays on your heart to give. Amen. Uh, I encourage you to give a lot if you can. Give what, give what the Lord lays on your heart. Uh, but he does a fantastic job at, at shepherding this flock. Also, don't forget that evening will be encounter. Am I right? Is that the name of it? Encounter. She's got her earbuds in. She can't hear me talking to her. <laughs> it's Encounter, a night of worship. Uh, don't forget our own praise team is going to be here. Sister Teresa Arwood and her uh, worship team is going to be here. And a lady from South Carolina is going to be here. It's sad, ain't it, when you get old. I know you young people don't know yet, but it, it just happens, okay? What's her name again? Marcella Mackins, amen. How, how many know it's important to worship the Lord? Amen. Amen. Let me say this about worship, and, and the Bible teaches us this. It says we enter his courts with thanksgiving and we enter his gates. That's not right. Somebody help me. Is that right? Somebody about, 
Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. I know I had that backwards. Can I say this? I want to share this, and, and I may share it later, but just with you guys. That my little granddaughter, you see her, the, the little, the three-year-old. Uh, she's learning to bless her food, you know, say thanks for it. And how many just usually sit down and say, thank you, Lord, for this food, and we just eat it? It's okay. <laughs> We're in church. Let's be honest. And, and a lot of times I say a general prayer, thank you, Lord, for this food, nourishment of my bodies and all that. But she was praying the other day and really hit me. She began to pray and she said, Lord, thank you for my taco. Thank you for my chips. Thank you for my chocolate chip cookie. She began to name everything that was in her plate to be thankful for. And how many know we ought to be thankful for God for everything that we have? Amen. We ought to be able to worship. That really messed me up. As she began, it's just so little of a thing, and we take stuff way too for granted. Amen. We ought to be thankful we got food on our table. Come on now. We ought to be thankful we got a roof over our head and clothes on our back and shoes on our feet. There's a lot of people in this world that don't have what we have. And the best thing we ought to be thankful for is your name's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. That's the main thing. So when, so remember that. That just, that just really moved me in itself that we, we ought to thank God. I seen a sign the other day that said this. It said, if we woke up tomorrow with everything we thanked God for today, what would we have? Come on. That's pretty hard, ain't it? Because sometimes we just go through life and thank you, Lord, and sometimes we don't. But I encourage you tonight. Let's stand. I'll just throw that out there. We're going to pray. We're going to invite God into this service. We're going to ask him to do mighty acts, mighty wonders, mighty miracles in this place. How many believe he can do it? How many believe he can do it tonight? Come on now. How many believe he can move mountains tonight? How many believe he can part the waters tonight? How many can believe he can make the walls of Jericho fall in your life tonight? Amen. Amen. Hey, I serve a God that's still in control. I serve a God that has all power and might. I serve a God who stood out on the realm of nothing and spoke this world into existence, and he has the same power today as he had when he did it back then. Amen. How many know one day he's coming back, and one day he's going to put things in order, and one day he's going to put the devil and the enemy where they belong, and one day the righteous are going home. Amen. Woo. I get excited a little bit. I can't help it. Amen. So I want us to do this. I want, we're going to pray, but I want you to do this before we pray. Say, neighbor, give me a little room. So I'm about to be thankful here just in a moment. I'm about to be thankful for everything that God has done for me. I'm about to be thankful for all that he's done. And then I'm about to praise him. See, there's, there's a difference between praise and worship. And then we're going to worship him. See, you praise God for the things he gives you. But you worship him whether you have anything or not. You worship him because he is God. Y'all believe that? All right. All right. For the next few seconds, I want you to do this because... I think sometimes we have the world on our backs when we come, and especially on Wednesday night. We're worried about this. We're worried about that. We, we, we got the work job situations going crazy, and who knows what's happening at the house. And, but I think sometimes it helps us get into a mind frame of worship. I want for the next five seconds you to worship God, your God, to the best of your ability. Right now, go. One, two, three. Four, five, somebody shout Jesus in this house. Somebody shout hallelujah in this place. Somebody shout glory to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Somebody that's it's your redeemer, you ought to give him a little more praise. Come on, you ought to give him a little more worship just because of who he is. My, 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 my. My, now, we got that in, right? So when we pray, we're going to continue to worship, amen? We're going to continue to be thankful, and we're going to continue to lift up the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You see, a lot of times we sing songs and we sing their God or our God, but I come by to tell you something. He's my God. He's my God. He might be yours, but I believe my picture's on his refrigerator somewhere. It may be moved over, but it's somewhere, and he's my God. And that's the key is if you'll worship God like he's really your God, then your worship is, is, is the greatest thing. I'm not trying to take up too much time, but I think we need to get a hold of this church. Can I say this, and I'm going to move real quick in this. Sometimes we get hung up on the type of song 
We get hung up if it's too slow, too fast, if it comes out of the red book or if it comes off. Red book, is that right? Red book hymnal? She don't know. If it comes, if it comes off the wall, that's for her time. If it comes off the wall, I had a thought the other day. I was thinking about this, and the Lord began to reveal something to me. It's not the song that moves God. I'm going to let that settle. It's not the songs that move God. It's not the excellent worship that we have, that, or the praise and worship team, the musicians, and how well they sing, that really moves God. You know what really moves God is the worship comes from your heart. The words come as a heartful meaning unto Him. That's what really moves Him. I can, I can get up here and sing better than Buffy. I can't, but I can. But that's not what moves God. What moves God is my heart is in line with the songs that are going forth and the words that are going forth. So right now, I can't help it. I just feel God trying to do something here tonight. Give Him a good praise one more time. Give Him a good praise from the heart. Not because we asked you to, not because we cheered you on, but because you want to worship him, because you come into this place to lift up holy hands, because you come into this place to give a shout of victory and a shout unto the King of Kings. Woo! Help me, Lord. Now let's pray. Father, we come to you tonight, God, giving you thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your mercy and your grace and your loving kindness, God. We thank you for the men and women who have come into this house to worship your name, Father God. We thank you, God, for all that you've done here and all that you're doing for us, God. Those that have been saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, healed, delivered, strengthened, encouraged, and set free in this place. We thank you, God, for what you're about to do, the mighty acts, the mighty wonders, the mighty miracles in this place, God. We ask you right now to anoint our singers, anoint our musicians as they lead us into worship, Father God. Anoint our pastor as he brings forth the word. Anoint the word and let it go forth and do its work tonight, Father God. And Lord, we ask it that you will inhabit the praises of your people and let your will and your way be done in this house tonight. And everybody said, Amen. ready for the coming of the Lord. Amen. Ooh, come on now. How many is really ready? The Bible says he's coming for those who are watching, who's watching and longing and looking for his appearing. I won't say this. If you ain't ready, you need to be ready. If you ain't ready, you need to get things in order. You need to get things under the blood. Young people, old people, middle-aged people, in-between people, you need to get things ready because at any moment he can come back. Amen. Amen. All right, let's get our tithes. Let's get our offerings ready if you'll stand if you're not. How many knows it's important to give unto God? Come on. How many believe what the Word says is true? See, 
giving is a heart issue, but it's also a faith issue. When you give or don't give, what you're saying is, and when you don't give, let me just say this, when you don't give your tithes and you don't give your offerings unto God, what you're saying is, God, I really don't have faith in you to do what you says you'll do. Because the Bible says he would open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on us. He went on to say, if you'll give, it'll be given unto you, shake and press down as you meet, if you will, as you give. He said, it'll be brought back unto you. And what we do sometimes, and I know this is our core group and probably more people in here give than any other time. And if you're watching on Facebook, just pay attention. Because the problem we have is, is when we don't give, what we're saying is, is my faith is not strong enough in you that you can handle my finances. It's all right. Here's the thing is, we have faith that he could save our soul from a devil's hell, but sometimes we don't have enough faith to just give 10% that he would even take care of your money. So here's what I'm going to challenge you. If he'll take care of your soul and you put your faith and trust in him, then put your faith and trust in him with your wallet and see if he won't do what he says he'll do. Come on. I know it's a little solemn tonight. It's okay. But I, I think sometimes we miss that. Because we, 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 we cheer when we say we can't outgive God because we know he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. We know the, the fullness of the earth hereof is his. But a lot of times we don't act on that. We'll hold back what's rightfully his because we're afraid to turn loose of it. We're afraid we can't pay the bills or we're afraid we can't get the new things that we want or we're afraid we can't pay the light bill or the water bill. I come by to tell you there's many in this house that can testify. If you're faithful to God, he will be faithful to you. He will. How many's ever, let me ask you a question. How many's ever gave to God and he was never faithful to you? Now let me ask you this. How many's given to God and he's always been faithful? Come on. Come on. That, that, that's, that's financial. It's in our spirit. It's in our family. It's in our life. So I challenge you tonight. I've been challenging you. Give you 10%. But I challenge you, if you feel led, give 15%. Finish out this year with 15%. See if God won't say what he, do what he says he'll do. And can I say this? In this challenge, you've got to understand it's not always going to be financial blessings that you give. He didn't say it was going to be money coming back to you. I know they teach that on TV, but we ain't on TV yet. And I don't think we'll ever teach it. How many know that if you can lay your head down at night and have peace in your mind, that's a greater blessing than the money you could ever buy? How many know if your family's sitting beside of you in church, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and ready to go to heaven, that's more than any money. You'd shell that every dime you had. Come on now. Blessings are way beyond financial means. And God will take care of you financially, and he will bless you in other means. Amen. So I encourage you, 15% the rest of the year. Try it. See if God won't do what he says he'll do. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come to you tonight, God, giving you thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for all that you've done in our lives, God. We thank you that you said you'll, that you'll do what your word says you will do, Father God. And, Lord, we're asking you, God, those that accept that challenge, if they begin to give 15%, God, you begin to bless them like they've never been blessed before, Father Lord. And, God, we ask you right now to take these tithes, take these offers, multiply for the use of your kingdom, Father God. Your kingdom, God, is the, what we give into. Your kingdom's what we sow into, Father Lord. And, Lord, we ask you right now to begin to bless the gift and the giver tonight, Lord. And we ask it in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Glorious day, living in love.
I said, send it on down, send it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send it on down, send it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send it on down, send it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send it on down, send it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on. One more time, come on. Send it on down, send it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send it on down, send it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Living, He loved me. Dying, He saved me. Daddy, He carried my sins all away. God, did He justify? Free me for heaven. One day, He's coming back. Glorious day. One more time. Living, He loved me.
Praise the Lord. There it is. Amen. If, you, if he's all you want tonight, give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. Come on up here, Brother Matt. Brother Matt's going to make an announcement. Amen. Get up here, youngin. We're going to have youth tonight. And I would say that God's going to show up and show out, but he's already done that, right? So we're going to take him over there, our kids. We're going to take that same presence that has already been formed in here. And we're going to take it over there. And just like the song said, when he walks into the room, everything changes. And we're just going to be praying that everything changes. He messes our heart up, right? We go through the week and, and darkness tries to get on our hearts and everything. Everything's going to change. Our Savior's turning it all around. Amen. Let's give our youngins a good hand as they're... And uh, for y'all that didn't get to come or didn't get to stay late enough to find out, Leonard Patterson lost the title. Can somebody give God a good praise for that? <laughs> he is not. Uh, brother, uh, right here, Tyler and who? Oh, it was Brian. I was thinking, is this Brian? Wow, look at this. Brian and Tyler, amen. And you know why Leonard laid out tonight? He couldn't, he couldn't stand it. He's sitting there. He's watching us tonight on Facebook. He is as green as Sister Angie's shirt right now. He's tore up. Pray for him. Pray for him he don't die like that. Amen. <laughs> good to see you. Hey, let's make our guests and visitors a good warm welcome, y'all. If you're visiting, you don't know who Leonard is, and the Lord's blessed you, and you didn't even know it. Amen. If you'll stand with me for the reading of God's Word, remember the 30th of this month, amen, is going to be Stump the Preacher. Amen. And we're going to pull this. We're going to move this out of the way. We're going to throw a table down out here, and we're going to take your Bible questions. Hey, listen, I'm not looking for how was Methuselah when he died, and who was uh, the high priest under whoever? That, I'm talking about. I'm talking about spiritual, biblical, doctrinal questions. Things that you need to understand. Amen. I think it's better to to do that sometimes. Amen. Uh, than it would be to just try to preach and hit everything, and you don't know what people really get and what they don't. But when they ask questions, then they begin to learn. Right. Amen. All right, our right. Exodus chapter 19, Genesis, Exodus. If you can't find that, come on up to the altar. We know you ain't been in your Bible in a while, amen? Amen, 19 and verse 10. So good to see you in the house of the Lord and everybody that's watching my Facebook, amen? Everybody turn around there and wave at Leonard and, just, and, and smile at him because he lost, amen? Praise the Lord, we're so glad he lost, amen? He might be lost, I don't know for sure, but uh, I'm teasing, you know I ain't. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Smile, Tina. It won't hurt you. You're in the house of the Lord. Come on. Verse 10. Exodus 19, 10. And the Lord said unto Moses, go unto, uh, go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow. And please get me out of the barrel and let them wash their hands. I don't know what we did, but it was horrible. <laughs> and be ready against the third day. For, for the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai, and thou shalt set bounds unto the people. Woo! I need a mic. I'll tell you what, I'm going to take up an offering after church tonight. If you feel led of the Lord, I need $400. We're going to get us a good mic. I hate this thing. Amen? I can get my audio technica the last 10 years and do better than this stuff right here. And this is an expensive one. Amen? And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves that you go not up into the mount or touch the border of it. Whosoever touches the mount shall, shall be surely put to death, and there shall not an hand touch it. But he shall surely be stoned or shot through, whether it be beast or man. It shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mountain, the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the nether part of the mount. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke because the Lord descended upon it 
opponent in fire, and the smoke thereof extended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. And the Lord came down upon, the, on, upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount, and the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go down, charge the people, lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. And let the priests also, uh, which come near to the Lord, sanctify themselves, lest the Lord break forth upon them. And Moses said unto the Lord, The people cannot come up to the mount Sinai, for thou chargest us, saying, Set bounds about the mount, and sanctify it. And the Lord said unto him, Away, get thee down, and thou shalt come up, thou and Aaron, with thee. But let not the priests and the people break through to come up unto the Lord, lest he break forth upon them. So Moses went down unto the people and spake to them. Stretch your hand to one and pray with me for me. Father, we are so thankful to be in the house of the Lord tonight, thankful for the mercy and the grace that has brought us to this place tonight. For each and every one, God, that's here. God, I pray your choice blessings upon them. God, I'm asking you, Lord, to move mightily in the midst. Let the word of God become flesh and dwell among us. God, leave, let us leave this place with a greater understanding of who you are. And God, I pray for those even watching by Facebook, may your presence be manifested in their homes, in their cars, in this place. And we give you praise, honor, and glory. And everybody said, you might be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, admittedly, uh, the Lord, while I was in, in Florida, was dealing with me about, and I hadn't even thought about these. This is a series I did some 10 years ago, maybe, I don't know how long ago exactly that it's been, but probably about 10 years ago. So if you get this message, and you only get this message out of the series, you're going to walk out of here, and you will not have a right outlook about God. You need all three messages. I've got, it's called the mountains of God, amen. And I, I was in a conference some years and years ago and actually read a book that uh, Douglas Smalls, the guy that preached here, was, and I read a book and got the thoughts for this little series out of his book so there won't be any plagiarism there, amen. I'll give him all the credit for the message. Him and the Lord. But I, but if you only get this message, you're going to be really messed up. And the problem with this message tonight is there's a whole lot of churches out there, and this is as far as they ever go with God. There's a lot of churches out there, amen, they understand the holiness of God. They understand sanctification, and praise the Lord for sanctification. But I got news for you, amen. Sanctification didn't start on the outside with a sleeve. It started on the inside with a heart. Help me, somebody. Why I'm preaching so good tonight, amen. It's all right. I don't need no hip at all. You just sit there like you're sitting on an ice cube. I'm going to preach you off the ice cube after a while, amen. The mountains of God. We find the children of Israel, Moses leading them, man. They finally got out of Egypt, amen, have you ever thought about this, there comes a place, amen, there comes a defining moment in life that you finally get away from something, you start a new chapter in your life, amen, without the same bondage that you've had all your, the defining moment for them was God walked up into Egypt and God took care of all the idol gods, they got used to the idol gods in Egypt, for 400 years, they were bound in Egypt, and they were they began to worship the, the gods of the Egyptians. And it wasn't that God was just wanting to come in and punish them with flies, amen, or, or turning the water into blood or whatever it was, all of those places. It, it was God was saying that I'm so much greater than the things that you are worshiping, amen. Can I tell you this? If you're bound tonight, amen, God is so much bigger. He's so much greater than the thing that has you bound, amen. You don't have to be a servant to see any longer, amen, if you don't want to be, amen, you can be free, amen, because the Bible said, to whom the Son set free is free indeed, amen, can you remember in your life when you finally got free, amen, from something that you didn't think you'd ever be free from, I, I was sharing with, with, with some friends and talking, and I remember, and I can take you to the place where I poured out the last half a beer, I was the worst alcoholic, and I poured out the last half a beer, a year, God started working on me a year before I got saved, and I quit drinking, amen. I didn't even know why. I just hated it, amen. And my, my little aunt was praying for me, and she was saying, God, make him sick every time he touches it to his lips. And she told me that, and I laughed at her. 
And I said, I don't care what you say. I've been drinking this for years. It don't make me sick. And I went and, and, and to a place called Thunder Hole. Me and a bunch of old boys was drinking. And I drank a fifth of liquor straight down. We was chasing it. We was we were seeing who could drink the most, the quickest. And then we was chasing it with beer. I drank a whole fifth of liquor. Amen. Stood back and said, hey, you like me now? And about that time, I started throwing up blood. It looked like I was hemorrhaging from the inside. I almost died. I knew that night that my aunt had touched the throne room of God. Amen. But I remember when God, God set me free of alcohol before I ever bowed the knee to the cross of Calvary. God does a work in our lives, and he's continually calling to you and to me. And he's saying it's time to move up. You'll never get to the place in God that you don't need to grow. You'll never get to the place in God that you know everything. You'll never get to the place. In God, where you have all nine gifts in the operation, amen. I want you to understand God is looking for somebody that'll look inwardly and say, God, I need help in this place in my life. Somebody ought to give him a little praise. The problem is in church, can I slow down or speed up? I'm liable to do them both, it don't matter. The problem is in church. We want a Savior. We don't want to go to hell. Raise your hand tonight if you'd like to go to hell. I'll just tell you. Consensus across the nobody, I didn't think so. Um, we know that we're going to die. We know that every day that we live, we get closer to the time that we'll lay this flesh down and we'll die. We understand that. We got that. I know a man is born of woman a few days and full of trouble. Amen. It's appointed unto man wants to die and th after this becomes the judgment. It, it's all the way through the Bible. I, the, with the exception of two people, amen, and with the exception of two people, amen, everybody has died. Amen. Everybody. Even Jesus died. Amen. Uh, with the exception of two people in the Bible. Amen. The problem is they, the, everybody knows that and they want a Savior. That's where religion comes in. Religion comes in and figures a way to get your money away from you. Amen. And, and give you a false sense of security that says you can do this if you want to and you can go to heaven anyway. Amen. That's why hyper-Calvinism is running through the roof and running rapid all the way even in the church of God. I heard of a pastor that's preaching hyper per Calvinism in our church saying it don't matter how you live I come by to tell you if you don't love the Lord amen and you don't live right you ain't saved help me somebody it's time that somebody stand up with a voice of clarity and declare that Jesus is my Savior and he is my Lord if you believe it give him praise everybody wants a Savior nobody raised their hand when I asked you who wanted to go to hell but nobody wants a Lord, or not a lot of people want a Lord. They don't want anybody to tell them what to do. That's why you got so much, that's why you got so much rebellion and anarchy going through these cities in, in America right now. Amen. I, I was watching, I was watching a black cop, and he was standing there. Amen. And he, he said, I was, and he said, I was trying to reason with the people. And he said, I was trying to say, listen, you got to understand you can't do this and not go to jail. And he said, and, and he said, then somebody would come up and say, Don't talk to him. We're gonna do what we want to. That's the generation that was raised up without God. They might have went to church, but it was Mamsy Pamsy church. They might have went to church and went through the motions. Amen. I am not at all interested in going through the motions of religions. Through me on the rhetoric. I can't take it. Send me a card at the house and tell me how it was. I can't take it. If the Lord ain't invited, I can't go. Amen. I want you to understand, if you have Christ in you, the hope of glory, you understand that you are underneath a higher power that says you cannot live like the world. Amen. I'm going to run down there and sit down on the bench right beside you. Scream amen loud as I can if you don't help me a minute. Amen. Christianity, we'd like to have our cake and eat it too. I've heard people say, well, it don't take all that. I said, it might not, but I ain't taking no chances, baby. Amen. Come on, somebody. 
Amen. You take your chances if you want to. It's your eternal soul. It's your eternal. It's for eternity. It's forever. Amen. I want to err on the side of caution with the Lord. Amen. I want to walk softly before Him, and I want. I want to know. Can I tell? Can I tell you this? I had no conscience of sin before I became a Christian. I lived like pure devil, and it never bothered me. I never. And when I got saved, somebody said, "You never did sin no more." No. When I sinned, then I absolutely knew it. I had a conscious, I had a clicker that on the inside of me that said TH, you can't go there anymore TH, you can't say that anymore, TH you cannot drink that anymore, now I want you to understand if you don't have a conscience and you can live in sin and you can commit fornication or adultery or pornography or if you can drink or if you can do whatever it is, get high amen, and it don't bother you my friend, you need to come back to the altar and find out if your name has been written in the Lamb's book of life. Somebody give him praise. Woo. 1 John 3 and 8, I want the back part of that verse. You know the first part of it. It said, for this, for this purpose the Son of God was manifested. What this says is, if you continue in sin at the top, then you're of the devil. If you live in sin and you won't stop sin, and I'm not talking about, I'm not talking, I'm not talking about falling in. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about if you continue to live in sin every day, amen, then you're not a Christian. That's what he said. He said, for this is the purpose that Jesus came. The Son of God was manifest. Why did he come? That he might destroy the works of the devil. It's time for you and I. I know it's a hopeless message, amen. I'll heal you up probably Sunday morning with the second mountain. But we've got to get a hold of this mountain. Sometimes, I, you know what, this generation has been taught so much greasy grace, you can't reason with them about righteousness. You can't even speak to them about sanctification. I mean, you can't tell them that they got to come out from among the world and be a separated people. You know why? Because somebody stood up and said, listen, come on over here, sign my card. I'll baptize you. You can join my church, and it don't matter how you live. One fellow told me here a while back, he said, I would come down to the church of God, but he said, y'all too, y'all too strict on sin. He said, I like to drink a little beer every once in a while, and I'm going to drink my beer and go to heaven. I said, sir, I sure hope it works out for you. But I don't think it will. I want you to understand the reason that Jesus Christ came into this world was not so you and I could continue to live in sin. The reason that it came and that he might destroy the works of the enemy. That you and I could be free. That you and I could come out from among the world and be separated. That you and I could be the lights in a lost and dying world. If you believe it, y'all just give me a nod. Amen. All right, I'm, it, I'm sorry, it's going to get worse. Hang on. I don't even know if I'm going to get you healed up tonight or not. Man, somebody run in there and get me a, a handkerchief. I done preached up a sweat in here. Romans 6 and 16. Let me slow down. Let me teach this man. He said, don't you know, know ye not, that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey? His servants you are to whom you obey. Whether of sin, thank you, sister. Whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. You know, let me, look, look what he said. He said, to whom you yield yourself servants to obey. It, it's, not, it's not real hard to figure out. It, it, I'm, not, I'm not talking with somebody, I'm not talking about somebody that just got saved and struggling. Hey, we've all struggled. We've all had problems. Amen. Listen, the problem with the church was there's always too shocked by saying, well, bless God, I didn't know. Somebody didn't call me on the gossip line and tell me. It's because you told everybody in the cotton-picking church. Help me, Jesus. I ain't going to say amen, Lord. Amen. We're shocked by sin, but we're rocked by sin. Did you get? We're shocked by it when it's somebody else. 
but we're rocked by it in our own lives, and we won't admit it because we're holiness people. Amen. We don't smoke, we don't chew, and we don't hang around them that do. Come on, somebody. Amen. But watch this. He said, to whom you yield yourself, servants to obey, his servant you are, whether it be under, whether it be sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. Can I tell you, everybody under the sound of my voice and watching me by the internet, you are a work in progress. I'm not, I've not reached sinless perfection just yet. Amen. I think Norma's pretty close, but I've not got there yet. I had one brave enough to laugh. Did you hear that? It was Darren. I heard him. <laughs> Amen. But what, 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 watch. He said, to whom you yield yourself to, that's, who's master, that's who your master is. They just left Rephidim, a place of rest and refreshing. Sometimes, sometimes when we have came through a lot of trials and tests, God allows us to go to Rephidim for a little while. Moses goes up on the mountain with the Lord. The children of Israel get to Sinai, and God begins to remind them how he brought them out. Exodus 19, 4, he said, You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. You know what he said? He said, Nobody wanted you but me. He said, Nobody wanted you but me. And he said, I came in and took you away and snatched you out of your bondage, snatched you out of your place of poverty, snatched you out of your place of being in a... Uh, being a slave, somebody needs to remember uh, God is the one who loved you enough to come get you. Amen. I want you to understand. You can say, well, you know, I was so good that the Lord just had to let me join his club. I come by to tell somebody there's none righteous, no, not one. I want you to understand God, God is no respecter of persons. He wouldn't let you in unless you come by the same way that everybody else goes and that's through and by the precious darling son of God and his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody needs to understand that it was God that looked down on you in the midst of your in the midst of your sin. It was God that seen you in the bars. It was God that seen you in the crack house. It was God seen you in your promiscuous. It was God who saw you and, and knew you from the very beginning and he loved you. We can't deal with that. We're our little minds, we can't compute it in our mind. We're trying to figure that. How is it that God knows everything about me and still does and still loves me and still wants me and every day he gives me new mercy? Amen, preacher. Preach on. I think I will. Amen. Psalm 42, he brought me up. I went on a high plateau. I was in the bottom. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit. Out of a horrible pit. Out of, out, out of the miry clay. He didn't need me. I needed him. I wasn't looking for him. He was looking for me. And set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. Sometimes you need to remind the devil that it was God was the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Sometimes you need to just talk back to the devil. Amen. I'm not talking about your spouse. I'm talking about the real devil. Amen. I know you call your spouse the devil and that ain't right. Amen. Darren didn't like that time. Wonder why. <laughs> He brought me up out of the miry clay, amen. You need to tell the devil, look here, devil, I was on your side and you about killed me. Your path was leading me to hell. I was on my way to the devil's hell a hundred miles an hour and didn't even care. I wasn't looking for God, but he came into Egypt, amen. One dark night in Egypt, amen. And I want you to understand, the Lord came by. The death angel come through, and when he seen the blood, he passed over everyone that had the blood applied. I want you to understand the reason that I'm still here today is because the blood has been applied to my life. Amen. If the reason I'm still here today, it was because, not because of my own righteousness. I can't boast. But I can tell you this. I've been clothed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, my Savior. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb of God. I heard somebody say the other day, I've done a lot of bad things, and I sure do hate to face it one day in the judgment. I I said, what are you talking about facing it in the judgment? I said, if you're a Christian, it's all under the blood. There is no evidence that God will ever bring before you of anything under the blood. How many thank God for the blood tonight? 
Amen. Oh, it's going to get worse. You ready? 10 and 11, and the Lord said unto Moses, Please don't get a misconception of God out of this message. You've got to get the other two messages. And the Lord said unto Moses, Oh, do I have to preach this, Lord? Yes, I have to preach this. Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow. Let them wash their clothes and be ready against the third day. For the third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. Hey, you can look this up. There's a guy, he's the nastiest human in the world. Look him up. He's the, I think he's a white man. I couldn't tell really. He was he was so he was so black he looked like he had and he he's eighty and he's and and he ain't had a bath in sixty years. How'd you like to be next to that rascal when it got real good and hot one summer day? <laughs> the Lord said, Moses, he said if people of God are going to come where I'm at. They got to get some things out of their life. See, that was the thing I loved about Pentecostal Holiness Church of God in Cleveland teachings was we taught sanctification. We taught it we taught it as uh, we taught it as a second act of grace. Amen. Uh, as uh, uh, as as we've been taught for, we've been teaching for a hundred years. We taught that for all that would call upon the name of the Lord, they could be saved. Salvation deals with your past. I mean, just give me a little Presbyterian nod right there. When I got saved, I got a free pardon from all them things I used to be. And sanctification was the power in your life to walk after the Spirit. It was the power in your life to overcome. You needed something else besides. Salvation is a wonderful thing. And there's a lot of denominations that just sit on salvation. And every time you come, Sunday morning they're going to preach the cross. Thank God for the cross. I love the cross. Amen. And then Sunday night we're going to come back and they're going to preach on the cross. And thank God for the cross. I love the cross. And then Wednesday night, did you hear about the little church? I almost said the name of the church. I didn't say it. But, but it, it said it said. Sunday morning's message, amen, Jesus walks on the water. Remember that one? And then Sunday night's message, it said, desperately seeking Jesus. And you, you got, <laughs> y'all are so dry. Lord, help us, Jesus. Lord, if you come back tonight, we're going thirst to death and cross cross cross. Quit laughing, I'm trying to cry. We taught sanctification. I, listen, I started studying against it because I didn't believe in it. I come from another denomination. I started studying against it, trying to pray. And the more I studied, the more I saw it. Amen. And, and the old timers taught us when Jesus led them out as far as Bethany and he blessed them. He spoke the Aaronic blessing over him. Yes, he did. Amen. I believe that with all my heart. And they said that's where they got sanctified. Amen. We taught it. Amen. As a second act of grace as John Wesley, the father of the Methodist, taught it. Amen. And believed. Amen. That you you and I could have power. God said to the people, if you're going to come in my presence, you got to get sanctified. Amen. You got to get cleaned up. Amen. Not just anything will do in the presence of God. Amen. I know we'll forget. As a young man, I was praying and seeking God. Amen. Early, early in the morning and the Lord began to deal with me. And he said, would you go? Would you go out in the middle of the street with what you got on right now and pray? I said, no, Lord. He said, if you're going to come in my presence, present Set yourself right. I want you to understand God is calling to the church one more time before the rapture takes place. And he said it's time to get the world out of the church, amen, and get the church out of the world. He's saying to us, you can overcome anything in your life tonight if you want to. Amen. Sanctification is not taught much anymore. 
but nonetheless, it's still a biblical doctrine. Amen. I understand I'm outdated now. People don't want to hear anything about it, but but how they how they gonna come out from among the world if they don't get sanctified? How you gonna know? How, how you gonna know there's power? So you got every Tom, Dick, and Harry right now preaching everywhere, telling you it's all right to live anyway, amen. And one guy said, and I heard Brother Phillips say something about this morning in the Bible study, and, and I could I, I could tell you the guy's name if you want his name. He is a false prophet. He said the clo- he said the he said the more you sin, the closer to God you get. I said, my God, Charlie Manson must have been a saint then, amen. My Lord, some of these heathens on TV now running around cussing every breath, they must be ready for rapture, ready, ready to get out of here. That's not the truth, amen. God is calling every man everywhere to repent. God is looking for somebody that will forsake the flesh. Amen. Your flesh will lie to you. Your flesh will make excuses and say to you, it's all right. I Look, I ain't ashamed of it. I'm trying, been trying a long time. Walked two miles this morning. Might walk two tonight. I don't know. I'm going to the gym after a while. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be like Medea. I'm going to go by the gym like she went by the church probably. But I'm going to go. Amen. And I want you to understand something, amen. I'd be laying in the bed at night, and I would be lying if I didn't say, I would, I'd be laying in the bed at night, and then vanilla wafers start calling my name about 2 o'clock in the morning. You know what? And this flesh says, come on, kids. Y'all just, I mean, you don't know how I walk two miles a day. You can have a handful of them vanilla wafers, and won't hurt your bed. And, and I get up, ease through there, grab me a handful of them things, and go back in there, and lay down. While I'm normally snoring, I'm a crunching them vanilla wafers. And Norma get up next morning, she'd come through her, and she'd say, Honey, there must be some rats in here. There's another way for crumbs in here. You better call the exterminator. A tough crowd, bro. It's tough. I'm talking to you about the battle between the flesh and the spirit. The Bible said the, the flesh lusts against the spirit and the fle- and the spirit against the flesh. And these two are contrary one to the other that you can't do the things that you are. There's always a warfare going on. Amen. It's almost like that little cartoon used to, we used to see back before the outlawed Elmer Fudd. My God in heaven. We've got to be politically correct. You can't offend nobody. Got to get rid of Elmer Fudd. The whole thing. He's just hunting rabbits. And they got rid of him. Amen. But we'd be watching them cartoons. There'd be a little devil on one side. He'd say, oh, you know you want to. And on the other side of me, a little angel saying, no, you know, you better not. There's something real about that, amen. It describes the lust of the flesh. It describes, amen, the warfare that's down on the inside. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, amen, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. You want to know what we're going through right now in America? This is spiritual wickedness in high places. There is an answer. Antichrist spirit that has took over half of our country, amen, burning down cities, amen, lawless, reckless, and say we ain't going to stop till we get what we want. I want you to understand that is not the spirit of Christ, and it's easy to be caught up into. God is calling to somebody that will listen to me tonight and say to yourself, T-H, you can't live like that anymore. Amen. Amen. First, first Corinthians. While we're listening, so good. And such were. There's a past tense to who I am. There's that other guy you never met. Thank God, some of you did. Amen. That you wouldn't have liked. And such were some of you. You know, what, you know what Paul said to the Corinthian church? He said, you can't look down on nobody for who they used to be because you as mean as they was. Come on. Come on. I know we, we used to hold him in safe so long we wouldn't. We can't even remember when we was lost. That's a lie. And you know what? I do too. And such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified. There's my word. But you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. The problem today is pastors are not teaching their people the past tense of sin. Look at what God said to the people. He said, 
You can clean up yourselves and wash your clothes. You got to do it. Amen. You got to be the one to make that step. Amen. God ain't going to grab you by the ears and throw you in there and scrub you up and make you clean up nothing. Amen. He's just going to see if he's going to be the Lord of your life or not. He sits on the throne of our heart. Amen. And he starts to begin to dictate to us and speak to us and tell us and tell us how we should live, how we should think. Amen. Come on. Amen. If old things ain't passed away, there's a problem somewhere. There's a short between you and heaven. Amen. There's a problem. Amen. If you don't have a desire, I'm not telling you you won't never fail. I'm just saying that if you can just continue on and never repent and never worry about it, amen, there is a problem, amen. I want to know that I, 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 I want the devil to know, amen, that I believe with all of my heart that I'm sanctified, amen. Listen, that's not that I'm above anything. I can fall like you can, amen. I'm a man like you're a man or a woman, amen. I want you to understand I deal with the same flesh that you do and sometimes on a worse level than you do. Anything that hits you, I done fought it for it gets to you in the church. That's why I am the pastor. I stand instead of the wolves that try to come into this place amen, and into your life. And I'm always praying, God, put a hedge around them. God, save their family. God, move in their life. God, give them a hunger for you. God, I plead the blood over them. And you know what? At the best I can pray, he still gets in. How do I know? I end up over here trying to counsel with people, trying to get them back on the right path. It's time that the church of the living God, the church of God, and Mount Vale, church of God, amen, get cleaned up. It's time to be sanctified again. It's time to be washed in the blood of the Lamb of God. It's time to come out from among the world and be separate. It's time that the world knows there's a difference in us. Amen. My salvation. And I, listen, y'all help me. Everybody can turn around and look at that camera. Look at it, see it? I done seen you. I heard what you said. The Holy Ghost told me what you said. You watching me. You said, how can that man preach on sanctification in short sleeves? And I come to tell you that my experience in God is so much deeper than the length of my sleeves. And my salvation is so much greater than religion. And if you don't get rid of that religious spirit, you're going to go to hell. Help me. Salvation is not at the end of your sleeves. And I do believe in modest apparel. Come on, somebody. Uh, you know something? We don't even really have a problem with that, amen. Since, uh, listen, we had this rule, amen. And everybody, like Brother Leon said today, everybody had to wear white shirts. Bless God, I got a black one on tonight. I'm really a sinner tonight. And then you had to have long sleeves, amen. And all you girls had to wear dresses. And you know something? Here's what I couldn't figure out. Way back in the 1800s when I got saved, amen, I can't figure out why it was, amen, that we... Uh, I mean, they could wear a mini skirt, bless God, and they considered that all right. But if a woman wore a pair of breeches, they was going straight to hell. Amen. I want you to understand, they pulled that scripture out of Deuteronomy. I feel a little teach. Come on, can I teach with you? Amen. Watch this. Out of Deuteronomy, they pulled that scripture. Number one, Deuteronomy is a book of the law. It would have to be a book of prophecy for it to mean what they said, where it says, for women not to wear that which pertains to a man. And you understand with me, Amen. That, that they made that say pants. Amen. Pantaloons were not invented for 1,200 years later. For that to be what that meant, Deuteronomy would have to be like Revelations, a book of prophecy. Amen. And I want you to understand something. I believe with all my heart, modest apparel. Yes and amen. I want you to know something. Amen. God is not looking to see how long your shorts and your sleeves are. He's not looking to see how long your skirt is. He's looking to see if your heart has been circumcised and you love him with all your heart. Ten cents, I'll preach a little holiness up in here. Hey, Amen. Let me move before I get somebody mad at me. Exodus 19. Please come back and get the next message. You're not going to, you won't survive this one if you don't. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves that you go not up into the mount 
or touch the border of it. Whosoever touches the mound shall surely be put to death. There shall not there shall not a hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned and shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live when the trumpet soundeth long, and they shall come upon the mound. Mount Sinai set boundaries and rules. Now I've been to the Holy Land twice, and I've been by Mount Sinai. We've not had an opportunity to go up on Mount Sinai. But as far as I was from it and could see it, and they pointed it out to me, I could still see where God come down on that mountain. And the whole t- to this day, the whole top of that mountain is burnt. Amen. Where God came down and he sat down on top of the mountain. Amen. This is the place. Amen. The holiness of God. The, 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 it, 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 the holiness of God demands sanctification. There was my word demand. The holiness of God calls to me and you and says, be holy like he is. He said, be you holy as I'm holy. Amen. This one thing I don't I don't understand. Amen. We uh, we go, amen, in the stores and places, amen, and people and people uh, people that are lost will come up to us and they wouldn't know if we was a Christian or not. I'm not trying to close line. I'm just telling you this, if you can dress bad, amen, and God don't deal with you, then listen to me, there's a problem, amen. God said at Mount Sinai, there is a line that you dare not cross. At Mount Sinai, there is a penalty for sin. At Mount Sinai, there are some things you don't touch. He said, don't touch it, don't come near it. At Mount Sinai, you don't come casually into his presence. At Mount Sinai, we got the thou shalt not not. Amen. At Mount Sinai we learned respect for God. At Mount Sinai you could die for taking a gazing look. What in the world ever happened to respect and holiness and fear of God? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If we don't fear God, we will be destroyed. Verse 17. You might not believe what I'm preaching now, but you believe I believe it, don't you? Amen. (laughs) And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood on another part of the mountain. Come on, boys, jump in the truck. We're going to ride up and check out God and see how he's doing today. Get a picture of what's really happening here. These people have been washing themselves inside and out. And now they're headed up on the mountain to meet with God. Verse 18 said, At Mount Sinai was altogether on the smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. Actually, this was all God said he was going to do is speak back to Moses so the people would know that he knew the voice of God. You know how imperative it is for whoever you listen to to hear from God? Amen. You can listen. Can I tell you this? I ain't being mean. Please don't be upset at me, okay? Be careful. I'll just say this right here. Everybody on TBN ain't preaching the truth, somebody. I used to think I had to listen. I used to, but I had, I couldn't watch Andy and Mayberry. My wife got on me and said I was preaching on Andy. Amen. And I used to preach on him because he's lying and smoking. I, and uh, I was, I was on Andy pretty hard. And I used to think I couldn't even watch that. I had to watch TV, and I got so confused by the different doctrines that's being preached on there, amen. Can I just tell you this, amen, you better know that whoever you listen to, amen, when they crack the sacred book has heard from the Lord, and they know the voice of God when he speaks to them. Can I tell you this? Everybody jumps up on a hickory stump and says, boy, let me tell you what is not a prophet. I am so sick, amen, of the bathroom prophets. I'm over this crazy generic law. The Lord's showing me, oh, somebody's back's hurting. Now, reality, how many's back's hurting in here? Raise your hand if your back's hurting right now. Yeah, see, I'm a prophet. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I just stepped into my calling. I'm so sick of those crazy mess. People running around hollering, they got a word from God. I want you to understand they heard a mule brand in a far field. They didn't hear from God. 
for when God speaks, he never comes to tell me how good he thinks I am. He always comes to correct me and pull me up higher. Well, I need some help right here. Hey, look, you see where I'm at? I'm almost done. Two more hours and we'll be out of here. Amen. The lightning and the thunder and the black cloud and the noise and the trumpet and the smoke and the fire was not God. Lightning at its core is 50,000 times hotter than the sun. All of that was a reaction to the God, to our God touching the mountain. Sinai is a place where you can hear God's voice. The people said go up and meet with him. This is a wild, untamed God, and we're afraid of him. I mean, as I see see what they said, there's people that's turned me off Facebook already because they didn't like the message because they like the liquor better than they love the Lord. Help me. There's people who turned me off because they knew that I was about to get in on their pornography and their porn hubs. Amen. And they knew that, that I was going to hit that. So if you stayed long enough to hear that now, you can cut me off because it's still the truth. You can't, you can't do that stuff and be saved. Help me somebody. Help me. God, help Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. And this is what people said. Said, you go up. So we can't control this God. You know what a lot of people want? They want a God they can, that they can control, that they can dictate. We're just like Israel. We say we want to meet with God. But when we see the demands of his holiness, we start backing down the mountain again. God is looking for a people who will say, Lord, whatever it takes, I just want a meeting with you. Whatever I got to whatever I gotta give, give up, I just want a meeting with you, Lord. Lord, if it's, if, can, can I tell you this? If, can, I, can I just speak into your life right here? Somebody sitting right here is struggling with some things that's so horrific to you. And I heard the Lord say this, and I ain't, I, I, I'm not one of them bathroom prophets, but I heard the Lord say, it's the people you're hanging around keeps bringing that spirit to you, and you got to get some people out of your life. Hey, I went ghost for three years. I moved out of the county I grew up in for three years to get away from all my rowdy friends. And if you're ever going to get the victory, you got to get away from some of those people that keep dragging you back into the pits of hell. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. <clears throat> Amen. It's time for the church to have a fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord seared in our hearts again. Psalms 42 and 1. I'm about to close. Then come on, get ready. As the heart panteth. Full, full grown buck deer panteth after the water brook. It almost gives you the, it almost gives you this illusion that something's been chasing that deer. And I believe David be the writer of most of the Psalms. David said, as a deer that's been in trouble and running for its life, and he's looking for a drink of water. He said, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. God is looking for a people who will say there's no sacrifice too great for my God. Matthew 5 and 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Can I ask you a question? I don't know, probably seems rhetorical, but on up. I don't want you to raise your hand. I don't, want you, I don't even want you to come up and talk to anybody after church unless you just want to. But on a scale of one to ten, how hungry are you for God? I'm not asking this is not a religious question, but then you are just loose here. I, I, let me tell you this. I outgrowed their sleeves a long time ago. And I believe Moss and Merrill. <clears throat> let me tell you this. This makes somebody be mad at me. But <clears throat> we was working on the house. Here. Been right off summer. And I appreciate everybody that's came to help me. A lot of good church people out here come help me put my house together. And I, I do appreciate that. The depths of my heart. I'm, I couldn't have done none of that all by myself.
myself. But uh, but Jimmy come over one day and, and it was hot. Man, it was hot. And uh, we was was down there. And I had on a hold your breath now. You know, they knock you out your seat. I had on a pair of knee shorts come down about right here on me. said so good to see you. He never looked at me. He's looking down like that. He looked down. I, I, I want to say this. You get mad at me on TV. Bless God. If it's wrong for him to see your knees, you better cut your elbow up and do that same thing. I'm not preaching against Miles Carroll. I'm preaching for him. But I was working. Come on, somebody. I ain't going to the gym in a three-piece suit. I don't care who likes it and who don't. I'm 52 year old now. If they don't like it, I'm sick of religion. That's religion. Keep the rules and you get really anointed. Baloney. Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Then you get really anointed. Come on, help me. That didn't help none. You know, I I, I was mean. I know. I should have went the other way and not offended the brother. But I know it wouldn't be long. I'd run into his wife. So I, I see him. We just pulled up our, we was pulling out. I just pulled up our where they see me. His wife was doing this, she's going, trying to look over there and see if I had him on. He done told her I did. And I guarantee you they went back and told everybody what a hypocrite I was and I wasn't even saved. Because they had it on, baby. You know what? I was climbing it, and I never could get good enough. The people that was holding the ladder up that I was climbing on was always one notch above me. I was never going to be what they were. I could never achieve the real holiness like they. And you know what? One day I, I jumped off the ladder of religion, and I jumped right into the life of Jesus. And I started crying out to him. And I want you to I'll tell you something. I'm going to tell, tell you run out here and run around no Daisy Duke shorts and stupid stuff. I'm not talking about stuff like that. I'm talking about modest apparel. Amen. And I want you to understand that when I began to cry out to God to give me a hunger for Him and not religion, God started changing everything on the inside of me. Everything. So I ask you this question again. On a scale of See, that's the problem because we as Christians being leaky vessels, we'll lose that hunger and never know. It's so subtle, it'll leave you. And then you'll leave the church and say, well, I tried religion and it didn't work. And you're right, religion will never get you off the ground. But what salvation is, is not religion. Salvation is a love affair between me and a Savior. And I cry out all the time and I say, God, give me a perpetual, John the Baptist, I heard him in the spirit. He cried out. You know what he said? He said, I must decrease that he may increase. You know what he said? He said, there's too much of me in it. I got to get me out of the way and get God in my life. Stand in, stand in, stand in, stand in. I feel him. You feel him. Oh, I know you didn't think he was going to because we was preaching a holiness message. But I ain't, trying to, I ain't trying to beat you to death with it. I'm just trying to tell you he's a God to be feared. You can't just live anyway and go to heaven. I don't care who you are. I don't care five-point Calvinism. Amen. Is a doctrine of devils. Help me. I hope they're watching. I don't care. I'll sit down with you and debate, sir. I'll sit down with you and debate, ma'am. It's wrong. I can prove it to you by the Bible. Five-point Calvinism. Don't scare me not a bit. We are Arminian. We believe that we must continue in the faith. We're not so dumb to think that it's our works that will get us there. We believe that you through continuing in the faith. That at 1201, Ecclesiastes said, His mercy is new every morning. Amen. To them that are in the faith. Amen. I want you to understand. 
that one day I'm going to stand before the king of all kings. Amen. I know we're about to vote on a president, and you better vote for you better vote against socialism. I don't care who likes it and who don't anymore. Amen. I ain't worried about it no more. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I'm a Christian, and you can't vote for that godless mess. Amen. And I ain't call nobody's party out. But listen to me just for a minute. Amen. I want you to understand we're about to elect a president one way or the other. Amen. But you know something? I ain't even worried about it. I'm not looking for a president. I'm looking for a king. And one day I'm going to bow before the king, and he ain't going to say, he will say to me, well, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You know what? But he's not going to say it. He's not going to say, T.H., come on in. You kept all the rules, and you was perfect, and you was right, and you was righteous. One of our dear, precious saints of God, I stood beside his bed two days before he died and was coming the day that he died, and he looked me in the eye, and he said, I hope I've been good enough to go to heaven. I said, forget about your own righteousness. Your own righteousness are filthy rags. I don't need to get into that. You want me to tell you what that is? We'll tell you after church what that really is. But I want you to understand my faith and my hope and my sanctification and my salvation is all by faith. I'm saved by faith. I'm sanctified by faith. I'm filled with His Spirit by faith tonight. And if you are in this place and you need a hunger for more of God and less of you, I'm opening the altar. If I were you, I'd run. I'd say, God, help me. God, you don't have a sin problem. You have a hunger problem. Ask God for a hunger for more of him tonight.
they have fought in the spiritual or in the physical to get here tonight. But it was good to be here tonight. I thank God for allowing us to be here. Uh, you know, we've got to really, really, really decide if we are going to go for Him or if we're going to go against Him. Because, you know, the Bible says today's the day of salvation. Today you've got to choose which one you're going to serve. You can't serve both. you got to serve one or the other. And uh, so tonight, just remember that. Also, don't forget, we, uh, Sunday night, Sunday, we have 815 service. We have uh, the uh, 930 study school, 1030 uh, worship service, 6 o'clock service that night. So invite someone and have them come back and uh, be with us on Sunday. Let's pray and ask God before the Lord in prayer. Dear precious Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, God, for allowing us to be here tonight. God, we thank you, God, for what you're doing. God, we pray that you help us that we be able to go out of the world and do what you need us to do, God. Help us that we can tell someone about you, Father. Bring us back at your point in time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.